towards the end of his life, Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he had a story that is a very sad story. This is actually one of his teachers, Muhammad ibn Yahya al-Zuhali. When he came to Naysabur, essentially, Muhammad ibn Yahya, being a teacher of Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, he welcomes him and he says, come on in, and he tells everybody, this guy is the guy. This is the one. He's got knowledge, it's clear, he's got ilm, there's nothing like him. He, he points all of his students towards this human being. Now, when that happens, the students, they literally hear Muhammad ibn Ismail, he's clearly more knowledgeable than Muhammad ibn Yahya, even though Muhammad ibn Yahya is more senior. But because he's got more of a pull in the community, he is from there, he's from Naysabur. Bukhari happens to be a foreigner at the end of the day. He's an oncomer. He just came. So all of these people, they have confidence in the knowledge of Al-Bukhari, but they don't have the same sort of like, he doesn't have the same sort of community around him. Do you understand? So now, when Muhammad ibn Yahya, he sees everybody's getting around him, it's getting out of hand, his own dars starts to decrease in numbers. So much so that nobody really wants to take hadith from Muhammad ibn Yahya now. At that point, Muhammad ibn Yahya, he causes a problem for Bukhari. Az-Zuhari is a scholar. May Allah forgive him. Scholars have jealousy between one another as well. Keep that in mind. You may see a lot of it. You may not see a lot of it as well. So he is a scholar of his own right. If you read his biography, he's a person of knowledge. But he got jealous. Everybody's going to Bukhari. Nobody's coming to my lesson anymore. Or my numbers are decreasing. So he picks out on the one thing that he knows. It's tr tried and tested. If you go for this, people are going to turn away. His aqidah has got a problem. So he says that the aqidah of Bukhari has got an issue. What's the issue? The issue is that Imam al-Bukhari believes that the words that a person says when they're reciting the Qur'an, the words are created. So, sorry, the, the, the voice is created. But Allah's speech is not created. Before Bukhari, Imam Ahmad and others, they didn't want to get into this detail. Imam Bukhari writes his book, Khalq, Af'al al-Ibad, in that he details this issue, and he says that, yes, the Qur'an is uncreated, it is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the voice of a person, the lungs, the, the air that comes out of you, that is obviously a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you understand the distinction? This is what Al-Bukhari says. This becomes, by the way, later on the, the creed of everybody. All of the scholars of Islam pretty much believe this today. But at that time, this was completely new. There was no one else that was saying this. Or if there was Muslim, by the way, he was among the people who was saying this. Imam Muslim actually went to Muhammad ibn Yahya later on. And he says, you know, I say the same thing. He says, ah, oh, but you, you know, you're a student. Okay, let, let it go. Do you understand? But he went after Bukhari in this case. And then one day one of the students came in the gathering of Bukhari. He got up, he stood up and he said that, what do you say about the speech of Allah? One question, second question, third question. He asked him the same question three times. At the third time, he says, Al-Qur'anu kalamullahi ghayru makhluq. The Qur'an is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has not been created. The words of Allah. As for the actions of the creation of Allah, they are obviously created. Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'amaloon. Allah has created you and He's created your action as well. And then He says, Wal imtihanu bid'atun. As for you questioning other people in their aqidah, that is a bid'ah. That is considered an innovation. So this man, as soon as he heard this from Bukhari, he got up and he said, Look, Guys, what Muhammad ibn Yahya was saying was true and he started causing a big ruckus in the majlis of Al-Bukhari. Because of this, your aqidah has gone bad. And from that day onwards, it was downhill for Bukhari. Completely downhill. Imam Al-Bukhari, literally at that point, you can, it's, it's clear that uh, nobody really was interested in taking knowledge from Al-Bukhari except for a mere few who are left. A lot of people had already taken hadith, so his book is already preserved now, right? 
But because Muhammad ibn Yahya is causing this problem in terms of his aqidah, uh, people left him and Muslim remained. He used to go to his gatherings. A couple of other students, they would say that, you know, well, how do we come to you, Bukhari? We want to take hadith from you. But whoever comes to you, everybody else outcasts him. Everybody says this guy is off the manhaj, so we've got to outcast him, right? And some of them, they said to Bukhari, you're a pious human being. It's clear. Why don't you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Against these people And he said you know there's a day of judgment We'll sort it out at that point And he would say that This is all from the plot of the shaytan And inna kayd shaytani Kana da'ifa Wa la yahiqu al-makru sayyiu illa bi ahlihi And the evil plot It doesn't gather And encircle anyone except the person who's plotting Now if you think about it If I didn't tell you the name Muhammad ibn Yahya As Duhali Would you ever know that name? No one knows that name. At that time, he was a very famous person. He was a person who had a huge group of people around him. He was the one who gave Bukhari the seat in Naysabur. But because Allah has a sunnah, you can try to fool people, but eventually, if there's a khlas in what a person is doing, it will show later on. And that's exactly what Al-Bukhari relied upon. He said, okay, I've done my, my, my due diligence. I've done enough uh, delivery of my message. And, and so Al-Bukhari now left Naysabur. He went back to Bukhara. He was, uh, he was embraced by the people of, of Bukhara as well, very, very heavily. They ended up making, like people embraced Bukhari outside of Bukhara. Okay? Because, yeah, he got outcasted in Naysabur, but people of Bukhara still know him. This is his own hometown. Family is there, kith, kin, blood, everybody is there. So he goes back now to Bukhara, people embrace him, and most of the people in town, they come out, they start to throw everything they could. One of the things they threw was sugar as well. They started thro throwing sugar at him, it was uh, ancient practice. And they started to throw uh, money at him as well. Alhamdulillah, he didn't get hurt. But they started to thro throw coins at him as well. And people really, you know, they, they, uh, they embraced Bukhari in a very, very positive way. It was just a little while until Muhammad ibn Yahya al Zuhali strikes back again. He goes and writes now to the Amir of Bukhara, who is actually related to Muhammad ibn Yahya. Okay? He goes and writes to the Amir of Bukhara and he tells him Bukhara, uh, Imam al Bukhari is going against the Sunnah of the Prophet. Literally, in the Rajul. This person went against the Sunnah of the Prophet. So, Khalid ibn Ahmed, the Amir of Bukhara, he goes and he reads this letter out to the people in public, and then he says to the to Bukhara, Imam al Bukhari to actually leave. He exiles him out of the city of Bukhara as well. And then Imam al Bukhari is in a small town. And really, from that point onwards, there are two different narratives, okay, about what exactly happened. One of them is that the Amir, he wanted, the, the, the prince, he wanted al Imam al-Bukhari to come and teach his family, his children, hadith. Imam al-Bukhari doesn't have that same sort of clout anymore, people have kind of left him. So he says, he's still a person of knowledge, you come to my house and teach my children, okay? Imam al-Bukhari again said, I'm not going to come to your house. The, the premises The ilm is always You go to the ilm The ilm doesn't come to you You're going to go there And it's not going to be coming to you So he didn't accept this offer He didn't go and teach the children of, of the Amir And also he doesn't want to go to the doors of the Umara The leaders That's another premise that Al-Bukhari has So because of that He got even further outcasted This is one possibility The second possibility is That some of the other neighboring cities, they did try to embrace Bukhara, Bukhari. But as Bukha, Imam al-Bukhari was going to that city, Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, heard that even the people of that town, right outside of Samarqand, they have also started to argue that, should we allow Bukhari to come and he's causing fitna and Naysabur and Bukhara and all the other, other places, should we embrace him in Samarqand at this point with all these problems? Eventually they decided, let's embrace him. Let's bring him in. 
So this is like all the debates, should we bring the shaykh or not, right? So they, they bring him in. But Bukhari himself, he says, this is too much. At that point, Imam al-Bukhari, he makes dua to Allah. He says, Allahumma khirli, Allahumma khirli, Allahumma khirli. Oh Allah, you make the decision for me. You make the decision for me. You make the decision for me. And then Imam al-Bukhari was on his mount and he fell off the mount and he died. This is one narrative. That he died in this way. And they, the people of Samarqand, then they came to him and they, they took him basically for the burial. But again, this is one narrative. The other narrative is no. Imam al-Bukhari was in his room and he died on the night of Eid al-Fitr in the year uh, 256 after the Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he was alone in, in his house. And in the morning, they found him dead. Allahu a'lam. But we know that he died lonely, generally. That's clear. Whether that be him on top of a mount or him standing outside of a city making du'a to Allah, asking him whether he should go to Samarqand or not, or whether it be that he was in his room and he was completely outcasted by society because of these uh, events that led up to that. Wallahu a'lam. We don't exactly know what took place. Uh, Imam al-Zahabi, he believes the latter. Some other scholars, they believe the former. But we don't know exactly what took place. We know that he died alone. And there was a lot of fitna that it took place towards the end of the life of al-Bukhari. And, but at the end of the day, as Imam al-Bukhari said, that the kaid of shaytan, as Allah says, he quoted Allah, that inna kaid shaytani kara da'ifa, that the plot of shaytan is very weak. And it was weak. Nobody remembers Muhammad ibn Yahya. Nobody remembers the Amir that had uh, exiled al-Bukhari. Nobody remembers any of those people. But everybody remembers al-Imam al-Bukhari. And that's why we say that ikhlas, sincerity, will always have the upper hand at the end of it all. Because Allah will give you the recognition even if people don't give you that recognition. 